morning, everyone. Hello. You can see that, um, you can see that today uh, I'm not Steve. And so uh, we're missing a few people. We're missing Brian and we're missing Steve. So we're hoping that as we move into music later on that you will sing out. And now the secret is out. We know, those of you who weren't here last week, this group of people sang amazingly well in parts. And so that was so lovely to sing together and to do that. And so we know your secret now. You can do it. So we are um, hoping that you will um, help our skeletal crew. But at this point, we're going to um, have a call to worship. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, for the Lord our God is very great. God is clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light like a garment. God stretches out the heavens like a tent and rides on the wings of the wind. O oh Lord, in wisdom you have made each unique creature. With all of them we come to praise you. Let us praise the Lord together. Amen.
blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Everyone, thank you, praise team. Shall we come to our God in prayer? Praise to you, O God, for the wonders of your creation. Lord, you spin the shining stars and stretch out the seas to the furthest horizon. Lift up the curtain of dawn so light can chase away the night. You give the earth its seasons and each creature its lifespan, breathing life and love into each precious soul. And so we come to praise you, knowing human greatness is a mere shadow of yours in this hour of worship. Breathe your spirit into us once more to inspire us to serve you with creativity and commitment and with the honesty and humility we meet in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you call us to walk your way in the world, to serve our neighbors and love our enemies. We confess that there are not easy choices for us. We sometimes turn a blind eye to a neighbor's need. We like to follow the crowd rather than challenge popular opinions. Forgive us, Jesus, for seeking an easier way than your way. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The good news is this, people of God, that we are loved, we are forgiven, we are empowered by the Spirit to live as God's people. Amen. Shall we continue to sing? Oh no, it's time for the scripture reading at this time. reading from Galatians 3, verse 26 to Galatians 4, verse 7. I'm just going to go like this so that I can, my glasses don't get steamed up. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you, as were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. My point is this. Heirs, as long as they are minors, are no better than slaves, though they are the owners of all the property. But they remain under guardians and trustees, until the date set by the Father. So with us, while we were were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. So we said Steve wasn't with us, but he is with us. Come and stand and sing amazing. Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind. 
chains are gone. I've been set free. Those in the Bible study and those listening to the sermons realize that that's what Galatians is about. It's about grace. It's about freedom in Christ. And it's just not freedom to do whatever you want, right? Because, <laughs> you know, my rights and what I need and so on. But it's freedom that to love as Jesus gives us Holy Spirit, to love others as He has loved us, 
and that brings joy not only to others but to ourselves, then we're living the free life. Let's come to our Lord in prayer. Dear God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts together, be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, freedom. You know, when you're young, you go, freedom! Right? When the teacher doesn't show up for class and you have a spare. I remember that feeling. Yeah. Lovely. All you teachers out there think, oh, they should have had a sub substitute teacher set up or something. <laughs> so we are free to receive from Jesus. And it says in our scripture today, Jackie read it, that so you're baptized with Christ. We're going to talk about that. Clothe yourself with Christ. And uh, I was thinking about that theme today. And uh, I had a little trouble finding a tie this morning, actually, getting ready. <laughs> For the, for the second service. But the shirt, I'm going to be using it in both services. But in terms of being clothed, why, why do we get dressed? Anyone? Give me, um, <laughs> this is maybe an easy question for some of you, but why put on clothes? Anyone? Yeah. To stay warm. What a great answer, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Pardon? Reduce shock. Reduce <laughs> shock. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, very good. Another good one. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? What, what does clothing do for us? Anyone? And I'm not looking for uh, like too many exact answers, but the idea is, is that when you get up in the morning, right, you want to put on something you, f you feel good in. And sometimes that's in the wash, right? So you got to put something else on. <laughs> And, but that's fine, and uh, then you're on with your day. But the scripture tells us, just like you're putting on clothes, because you wouldn't leave the house without clothes on, right? You just wouldn't, right? I guess the odd person would, but <laughs> most people wouldn't. You put on, as well, the clothes of Christ. It's a metaphor, but as important it is to put on clothes, put on Christ as you go through your day. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. When you put on Christ, you're reminded, Christ is with me, and then you're also reminded to be kind and love others as you love yourself. So we got um, serious things in the news, of course, right? Where we have conflict. We have division. We have um, the Islamic... Um, the Taliban, which is a is militaristic, Islamic, fundamentalist group, right? And the Afghans, over the years, for those who aren't aware, that the Taliban has been in control of that Afghanistan for many years, and the, the Allies came in for about 20 years, and then kept the Taliban at bay as much as they could, and then, of course, the Allies pulled out, and then in August, the Taliban again reclaim control of Afghanistan. Um, they've caused casualties um, against their own people, against the Afghan people. And 80% uh, of the casualties was recorded in 2011, a statistic I have, was caused by the Taliban. So they're not thinking of unity, right? They're thinking of division and power and wanting to be at the top in terms of um, military power and uh, influence. Then you have this picture, right, which is kind of the opposite, where it's a diversity of all kinds of people from all different ethnic backgrounds. But we have in our faith that we are all, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, it said in our scripture reading, we are all one, whatever race we are, gender, we're all one in Christ. And we do have that in our laws and so on. And we have within our background, we have Christian faith. We used to be called a Christian country, but now we don't call ourselves a Christian country as we did before. Over the years, we've become more secular. 
humanism has taken over, secular humanism, where we still are carrying those Christian beliefs as Christ wants us all to be one, as he is one with us. But we've kind of taken God out of the equation and we are depending on human ability, right? But we know we're all flawed, right? And we know it only goes so far. But still, even in our laws and so on, we can still be pointed to Christ when we have laws that create unity and there's, there's not racism in our society and freedom for people to be who they are. We've got a ways to go yet, don't we? We've got a ways to go. And so, in our culture, with these laws, it is still in the spirit of Christ, right? But it fails to a, to a certain degree because we're depending on human wisdom, right? And we are all, all, we are all uh, flawed. We all make mistakes, and we can start creating division even within our striving to be unified. I remember um, when I was in, we were in Georgetown. We lived in Georgetown for a few years, Jackie and I, before we moved to Coldwater. And that was in uh, 93 to 95. And I remember there was some racist um, parades going on, the far right group, skinheads and so on. And I remember they were going down a street. And then one of my neighbors said, get a grip, man, this is the 20th century. Right? It was in the night. <laughs> right? You should know better. Right? But that was just based on it's part of our culture right now. Right? So, as Christians, we go back and we say we need to reclaim the center of Christ. Because when we have Christ as our motivation, then we can truly love others. Right? As God has loved us. As many of you were baptized into Christ and have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ. Okay, this is Paul, who was quite racist again, or against those who didn't follow the way of Christ, and he was transformed. He is so convicted of that. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs, according to the promise. So what that means is that when we trust in Christ, in the promises of Christ, it's not our good works that earn our status in society or our status before God, but it is a free gift of God's grace. Then we are free to be who we're called to be even though we are flawed. And grace is what? Unconditional love. And in Galatians, Paul wants it to be learned over and over again. That it's not by the works of the law. We're not better than anyone else. But it's a free gift of grace that we are to accept and to receive. I love that picture um, because it's somebody in the rain, right? And they're joyful in the rain. We had a lot of rain earlier, and it's kind of nice that the sun was out today. But in our family, we have a tradition now. We go for a walk, and if it starts to rain, we say, remember your baptism. And we do this with our kids over and over again so that when they're older, and maybe we're not around anymore, they'll remember the baptism. And baptism, when you're baptized, it doesn't mean you have a silver bullet and you're saved. Right? It's a symbol. And it means that you're acknowledging that you are a child of God dearly loved, and nothing can separate you from the love of God. And you want to follow in that love because that changed your life and that is changing the world. And water is um, also a source of what in baptism? It's a, it's a source of all of life. If there's no water, there's no life, right? And water washes us, cleanses us, and wants us Baptism is a symbol where Christ is clothed in us and empowers us to share that love to others. So we know that God is with us. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, by God's grace, 
we are part of God's family. And then through Jesus, who gave his life for us, right? Because Christ died and rose from the dead, even though we die and all of us will die, we will also rise with him. And God, the Father, and the Son are the Trinity, right? And when we get an example of the Trinity, we see true love, right? Three in one. And we can't totally understand that, but we know it kind of had to be like that. When Christ died for us, then we not only are dying, are raised with him, but then we are loved as the Father has loved the Son. It's a beautiful piece of information for us. And not only are we raised with God and, you know, we're down there, but we are exalted and we are considered one of God's children because of Christ, holy and dearly loved. And nothing can separate us from that love. So we have freedom, but yet in formation. The law does not make us good or better than other people, that we, you know, follow the Ten Commandments perfectly, and then, oh man, we're a good person, and we have earned salvation. It doesn't work by that. It's freedom is accepting the love of Christ and accepting what Christ has done for us. The law convicts us of our sin, okay? You know what? Every day, every Sunday rather, we have a prayer of confession, and we confess where we have missed the mark. Okay? And that's kind of the definition of sin, missing the mark. But when we miss the mark, it means when have we not loved? When have we not loved others? When have we not loved ourselves? Because sometimes we're so hard on ourselves as well. And that's what the law is. It convicts us of how haven't we loved as Christ has loved us but primarily teaches us how to love God and love others as ourselves. The first four commandments, we talked about this before, are love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. The first four are love the Lord your God, and the last six are love your neighbor as yourself. The summary of the law. But the law is important because it pushes us to love others, to love God, and to love ourselves. Dressing every morning to be clothed with Christ. So when you get up in the morning, and it's in the scriptures more than once, Paul talks about being clothed with Christ. When you put on your clothes, when you're choosing the garment for the day, remember that you are part of God's family. And I love this picture. You can't see it that clearly, but it's Christ putting on the garment on this gentleman. Right? And when you put on Christ, it's not so much of, I got to put on Christ because I got to be nice to other people today. <laughs> but it's Christ actually through the Holy Spirit putting the garment on you. And then there's two things that happen, right? The first thing is you're reminded that you're not alone. You're reminded that the Spirit is with you. And as you talk to others, the Lord can give you the words to say. And the second thing is, is that you are empowered then, and the fear is taken away from you about saying the wrong thing and, you know, not being good enough and so on because you're covered with God's grace. And you can freely love others as well. Because fear constricts, right? And when we are in Christ, then we don't have to be competitive with others. We know we are loved. And it, that, that love is not scarce. It's abundant. And as we live through our life, we have to continually let go. Let go of our, 
our own control. You know? Our worries that we don't have control over, and I'm guilty of it myself. We have the garment on. We're kept warm. We're complete. And we can go out with confidence. And it just doesn't happen overnight that, you know, we have the garment on and everything is fine. We're living totally free. It's a habit that we need to, to work on. Put on the garment of, of Christ. Put on, clothe yourself with Christ. And His Holy Spirit will empower you. Will strengthen you. Will remind you that you're a loved child of God. You're warmed up by that garment. And then empowered by the Holy Spirit with the confidence that He will work through you to share that love with others. Thanks be to God for His Word. For the garment that we're called to put on because we've been baptized with Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Ed. Um, Doug, do you mind just putting lights back on so we can see me? So maybe this will be a kind of, this song will be a little bit of a sacred earworm for you. I often find I hum and sort of reflect on these songs throughout the week, and um, this is kind of, to me, very reflective of what Ed was talking about, a kind of a prayer, this power of your love. And if you want to stand, please do so. Please be seated, everyone.
Shall we come to our Lord in prayer? Dear God, you are the God of each and every life. You open our eyes on the world with your love to show us your presence and your purpose in all creation. We thank you for the wonders of the seasons as they change, for the gifts of love and compassion you offer us through friend and stranger. We pray for the earth as it struggles to support your many creatures. Make us better stewards, Lord, of your creation. And kinder, or, and Lord, work in us to be neighbors to both friend and stranger. God of justice, you open our eyes on the world to show us struggle and conflict. We see the burdens many are carrying and the way differences create division. We pray for all those still struggling with the economic impact of the pandemic. And for those feeling the stress of these days in deeply personal ways, Lord, show us how to support those in difficulty and men, Lord, relationships in our community. God of compassion, you open our eyes on the world to show us suffering and despair. We see challenges for health care all around us and know many still face the effects of COVID-19 or other illnesses and complications that make life hard to cope with. We pray for those who suffer, Lord, and it, here in the congregation, those who are ill, and in so many places in the world you love. Lord, we now lift up those we know connecting with, connected with our congregation, with the community, and in the world, Lord, we lift them up to you. Lord, give strength and compassion to all who offer treatment. Encourage and hope to all who wait for healing. God of wisdom, you open our eyes on the world to show us its complexities. We are countries locked in old animosities and communities overwhelmed by fresh upheaval. We pray for the millions displaced in current conflicts and by natural disasters for leaders here and around the world. Open their eyes, Lord, to the suffering of the world and those in their jurisdictions. And open all our eyes to ways, Lord, we can participate in solutions to situations which break your heart and ours. And so we pray for your kingdom to come in the words Jesus taught us, shall we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. them uh, to come next week, too late this week. Monday, our pantry goes ahead as usual. Bible study at 6.30. Please read Galatians 4 and 5 before you come. And Women's Missionary Society, WMS, meets at 1.30 in the lounge with the responsive word, thankful. So, uh, that's it for Monday. Tuesday, Board of Managers meets at 6.30 in this room and session at 7.30 in the chapel. Wednesday, busy morning. Quilters at 9 a.m., our regular work crew at 9 a.m., and turkey pie makers at 9 a.m. So if you want a parking spot, come early. Uh, and I 
saw in the email that the turkey pies are all sold out, so that's it, folks. You're too late. <laughs> yeah, too late. Thursday, Friendship Kitchen, 2 o'clock in the chapel. We're going to have a gingerbread social. So we'll see how that goes. Our first time meeting in ages and ages. And praise team rehearsal at 7. Friday, nothing. Saturday, nothing. Sunday, we're back here again. Last day for you to donate, to donate your toonies and loonies in the Canadian food grains uh, tree, which is at the back of the church at the moment. Thank you so much, Nancy. And we're going to just sing um, At this Power time. of Your Love. Yeah. And then the benediction. The benediction. After. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Shall we stand? Want to stand one more time. Let your love surround me, bring me near, draw me to your side, and as I wait, I'll wait as be the eagle, and I will so with you, your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. up your hearts to the Lord. Receive his blessing and go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship, the communion, the guidance, the love of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always this day, tomorrow, the day after that, and forevermore. Help the way.